In this presentation, we will record journal entries related to wages, both direct and indirect, within a job cost system. Information will be on the left. We're going to enter that into our general journal, then post it to the general ledger. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Acer 27 inch monitor. I've been using an Acer monitor as my primary monitor for a few years now. This is the first Acer monitor that I have used after having used a series of different brands of monitors in the past. The Acer monitor has been performing well and I'm trusting the Acer brand more and more as I use the monitor. I have a 27 inch monitor, which I think is ideal for what I do, which is of course the screen recording and the editing. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. General ledger being used to create the trial balance. Here is our trial balance. It's in order, assets, and then liabilities, and then equity, income, and expenses. We, of course, are focusing in on the asset accounts, more specifically the inventory accounts, as we take a look at the flow of a job cost system. What we're doing here is looking at the wages that are paid to people that work in basically the wear in the construction of whatever we make for making guitars in the construction if we have construction jobs within uh, the construction process the people that work directly on that as well as the people that work indirectly uh, we're gonna have to sort those two out and record this information to understand this we first need to think about that we're really kind of just processing payroll here we're processing payroll to people that work on the jobs if they work in the factory and they're making guitars they work in the factory. We're processing the payroll. Now, when that happens, typically we think that the journal entry, if we if we take out all the uh, withholdings, we're not going to get into payroll withholdings and whatnot. But if we think about the simplified transaction of a payroll transaction, it would be we're paying someone, crediting cash. We instead are going to make a payable, wages payable. And then the debit, traditionally, we would think would go to wages expense or something, some type of expense. In this case, that's, of course, what the difference is going to be. And it, and it takes a little, little while to really understand that this is going to happen a lot in a job cost system because we start to memorize if we've worked in other types of uh, industries, a service company, merchandising company, that every time we have payroll, it's just going to be wages expense. But uh, in this case, we're, that's because of the matching principle. Before, it used to be that we used those wages in order to help us generate revenue in the same time period. And this time where they're not generating revenue yet they're making an asset they're making inventory so that's the first thing we need to realize we're kind of processing payroll but it's going to look different and we're going to have to just basically unlearn if we just memorized kind of the payroll journal entry which is the credit cash or credit wages payable and debit the expense we're not going to debit the expense because it's not an expense type what we're going to have over here is the uh, jobs that they worked on and that's what we will have to track so let's take a look at that real quick on how that might happen from a forms basis, just an example. So we're going to go to the right over here, all the way to the right. And we're going to have something like a time ticket, of course. And the time ticket is going to give us an idea of uh, the, the jobs, the people that worked, the jobs that they worked on, so that we can track what job is being worked on. So just note that we're going to need some type of system within a job cost system to track which jobs are being worked on so that when we process the payroll, we can process it and, and select the correct account to, to hit, which, which is going to be the correct job account uh, when processing uh, their payroll uh, process. So this individual worked on job B15, and that's where we need to apply the expense of 
the wages we're going to pay for this individual. Note that this could happen for a company that makes stuff or for a service company. Like a service company, like a bookkeeping company, may have um, a, a job cost system in a similar fashion. Also note that here we're applying out the actual cost. Uh, if we work in a bookkeeping company or something like that, or a law firm, we may have a billable rate for people that might be different, meaning we might make our invoices using uh, some type of billable rate that's different from the actual pay rate. Or we might make our invoice with what we actually pay an individual and then mark it up, use some kind of markup uh, in order to record it. Here though, we're tracking the cost to the inventory, the cost to the job. So we're really using the actual number that we pay uh, employees here. So I'm gonna go all the way to the left again. So I've scrolled all the way back to the left. Now that we've just seen the documentation that might be used to create this, we're, we're gonna just look at the jobs here. This is the, the jobs and the direct labor that we are applying to them, which we're putting together by basically uh, tracking as, we, as the employees work, typically in a database program of some kind, uh, what job they worked on. So job uh, B15, we've got 1,200 that's gonna be applied for direct labor. Job B16, 900, uh, B17, 560, B18, uh, 850, and B19, 690 for a total of 4,200. So the journal entry then is pretty straightforward. We don't need to break it out for the journal entry, but we do need to break it out for the supporting documentation in each job. So the journal entry, we're just going to use this total here. It's going to go into work in process. And that's usually, that's going to be kind of the confusing thing here because again, typically we would think of it as an expense. Here we are using these wages in order to help us generate an asset, which is going to be inventory, which is represented here by unfinished work in process. So it, it's a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So I'm going to right click and copy. We're going to put this in B10, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount in C10 is going to be that 4,200. Then we're going to credit something for 4,200. I'm going to use the kind of plug formula of negative of that number and enter. And then we just need to see the amount. Now we could say that we paid cash, but typically a lot of book problems and in practice, we may go into wages payable first and then pay it at a later time. So I'm going to put wages payable. So J14, right click and copy. We're going to put that in B11, right click and paste one, two, three values only. So again, if, if this was a normal payroll journal entry for a non-manufacturing company, we would credit wages payable or cash and debit wages expense or something like that. And then we, we would have withholdings too. We're simplifying the kind of payroll entry here, but we would debit wages expense. Here, we're not debiting the expense. And that's kind of the tricky thing that we're gonna to have to see a few times over as we go through a manufacturing company. And that's because of the matching principle. We haven't used those wages to help generate revenue yet. They're gonna help us generate revenue in the future. When we finally sell the inventory, we will expense it in the form of cost of goods sold. So the value of that work is going into the inventory, which is currently in process and therefore going into work in process. So let's record that out. Here's the work in process account. It's going to be one, two, three, four accounts down here. It's going to be four accounts over on the GL then. We're going to try to just scroll back and forth. If you want to make the screen smaller, uh, that can help to record. I'm going to try to keep it full size and use scrolling uh, to, to do this. We could also freeze the panes, but we'll do it this way. So we're going to go to work in process. Here it is. We want to be in the debit. We are in cell S10. I'm going to say equals and point to that 4,200. And that's going to bring the balance from 2,230 up by 4,200 to 6,430. That then is being used to create this trial balance number. And we're out of balance by the 4,200. Then we'll record the other side of this, which is wages payable. That's going to be our only liability account. It was a pretty simplified trial balance, but there's our wages payable. We're going to scroll over to wages payable. It's going to be a credit. So here's wages payable. We're going to be in the credit side. I'm in X19. So within X19, 
equals, I'm going to go all the way to the left until I find it. Wages payable, the last journal entry, 4,200 and enter. So there it is, wages payable, 4,200. This number then being used to create wages payable here, and we're back in balance. So our journal entry is back in balance and has been recorded here. Okay, so there's our process. Now, once again, we did something to work in process. And whenever we do that, we need to support this not only with the GL, as we have here, but this only gives us the detail by date. We need to break it out by job. And remember, it's similar to like the accounts receivable being broken out not only by date, but by customer who owes us the money. Work in process needs to be broken out not only by date on the GL, but by job. Which job are we applying these costs to? So if we do that, that's where we're going to need this separate breakout here in the sub account. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and we'll bring it over. I'm going to go all the way to the right to where our jobs are. So here's our jobs over here. And I'll paste this down here. Okay, so, so now we're just going to apply this out. That 4,200 is broken out. Job B15. We're in B15, direct labor. And we're going to say this was 1,200. And then B16, 900. Here's B16, direct labor, 900. And then we're going to say B17, uh, 560. B17, 560. And then B18, 850. B18, 850. And finally, B19, 690. So we're going to go over here to B19 and say 690. Now, if we add up our total jobs, they add up to direct materials, direct labor. These two add up to 1,230 being summed up across being summed up vertically, here's our total 1,230. That's the case for all jobs. If we add up all of them, they're all open. All these jobs, we can do it this way. All these jobs <laughs> add up to this amount. That should be equivalent to what's on the trial balance and GL. So we can see over here, we noted that this work in process was used to create this number and this number should be supported by this number and by the uh, work in process, the jobs and, and it is. So we look good there. Uh, the last piece of this then is we're going to record this amount. This is the indirect labor and that's going to be anything in the factory that we couldn't apply to a job. So if we have like supervisor salaries or something like that, we don't know which job they actually worked on, if any. <laughs> so they're they're working on multiple jobs. So we have to basically apply their salary uh, to those jobs. If it's a maintenance or something in there, we we might need. If it's anything that's in the uh, factory where we make things, if we're making guitars or whatnot, we need to be able to apply uh, those salaries out to the jobs. So that's going to be the indirect labor here. So it's still going to be wages payable because we're processing payroll, but the debit now not going to work and process because we don't know which job it's going to. It's going to go to the bucket, which is factory overhead. So we'll right click and copy factory overhead. We'll put that in B13, right click and paste 123. And then the amount is going to be 1,200. We'll credit something, run 1,200 as well. I'm going to do that with a little like negative of that number, that's like negative sub plug formula. <laughs> you could put just a negative 1,200, that's fine too, but. And then that's gonna go to wages payable. Again, it's kind of like processing payroll, like we're, we could have said paid cash. We're not dealing with any of the withholdings here. We're just having a simplified payroll journal entry. Rather than debiting expense, however, it's going to an, an asset account, an inventory account, in this case, overhead, until we we figure out a way to apply that overhead to a job. So we're going to right click on wages payable. We'll put that in B14, right click and paste one, two, three. And there we have it. Now let's record this one. We're going to post it to the general ledger. Here's factory overhead. Here's factory overhead. It's like the third to last uh, asset account. Same order on the GL. So factory overhead is down here. 
So it's right there in S26. So within S26, I'm going to say equals, go left, I'm going to find that last account, there it is, factory overhead, and pick up that C13, uh, enter. So within S26, it equals C13, bring in the 550 previously in there, up by 1,200 to 1,750. That 1,750 then is being used to create the trial balance. We're out of balance by 1,200 until we record the other side. So here's the other side. Wages payable. It's our only liability account, which is nice, and this nice small trial balance. So we're going to go find wages payable. There it is. It's going to be in the credit side again. I'm in X20. X20. I'm going to say equals, and then we'll scroll left and find that, that account. So we're scrolling left. Wages payable. We'll pick that up in D14 and enter. So here's wages payable equals D14. It was at a credit of 4,200. It goes up in the credit direction, 1,200 to 5,400. That then is used to create the trial balance. And the trial balance is back in balance. Debits equaling the credits. Debits minus the credits equals zero. Still no effect on net income uh, here. And, and again, even though we kind of paid wages and you might and are thinking if we've thought about companies other than manufacturing companies is probably that there should be an expense related to wages expense but no uh, it's there's not an expense because that was part of inventory anything that we had to pay for in order to conform or convert the raw materials to inventory is not an expense until we sell the inventory it's part of the cost of inventory.